What's this one? Okay. And let's get ready to rumble. Manus playing Ajari. Of course, what's fun in Immortal, as it is in Zero Space as well, is that you always start by selecting who you want to play with. You have your factions, you have your sub-factions in the Immortals, and that really determines the type of play. And, okay, we're going to have two Malas. So Ajari Mala versus Orzum Mala. Orzum, generally the more defensive Immortal. Um, Mala, kind of in between. Zoe is the more aggressive one. Ajari can be very aggressive as well. We'll see how this plays out. Ajari has a lot of spells that allow her to skirmish and come back, which is more her and Zoe's type of, of, of play. Whereas Orzum is more defensive, he has the pillar as a final def final attack, but his entire are great at defending, as long as they're in hollow ground, they're able to defend pretty much everything. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, for anyone wanting to observe, don't forget you can press Alt plus W, and that will get you this beautiful menu at the bottom that has the pyre. Uh, depending on the, on the immortal, they're going to have special abilities. Mala has the blood, which lets her upgrade her units. And of course, Orzum has the towers. Each tower that he builds is going to give him a bit more power every time. And the first battle is already up. Scrub wants to take out Doug Giles. Scout, the scout takes a lot of damage. And Scrub going for the kill. Oh, he's going to get it. He's going to get it. He gets the first kill. Scrub with the first, first blood of the match of the tournament so far. First unit goes down. And oh, great play by Madness. Gets his own scout out. And on Team Ice, they're both expanding. Of course, with this whole scout battle happening, no one really knows what the opponent is doing, so that's a bit of detriment of knowledge. Are they, are they rushing us? Oh, the kill. Scroop winning it all. We can see the power. You gain power for getting a kill. So Madness gets one kill, and Scroop gets the other two. Great first play. The other scouts are on the way now, the secondary scouts. Scouts get spawned every 30 seconds. I believe it's 30 seconds so you have up to three scouts to really get a good view of the map and yeah double expansion for team ice uh, team ice being the blue and green team and team fire being the red and orange team uh here we get started so some fun f fun things here's the elder vault the elder vault is a secondary resource well it's, ooh, what are they doing okay more teapot fighting always teapot fighting another important part Fact about teapot fights, when you kill an opponent, you regenerate all your HP, so it's pretty important to, uh, <laughs> like, it's pretty good to know that if you get a kill, you're going to regenerate. Yeah, okay, you got hit at the same time. Ooh, two versus one, got to be careful. Doug Gao gets taken out by a double teapot, and Frog catched up on the pirate department. No one has units, everyone for, went for a lot of units early, and yeah. What I was talking about? Right, the economy. The economy of the game is pretty interesting. You start with the aloe line here, the ether. Ether you can get either by putting an extract or paying 50, 50 alloy to get a bit extra. Uh, and you also get the Elder Vault, which gives the same amount of alloy, so the primary resource, as one full mining base, more or less. So in the game, to stress the economy, you start with about two base economy, and then adding expansion only adds about 50% more, more income. So it helps for one base place, helps to balance that in that direction. And if ever you attack, you can kill the, El the Elder Vault and does about as much damage as killing the whole Allo line. If uh, you want a significant target, but not without really killing everything. Of course, we're in the first real battle of the game. The scouts was always interesting, but here's when it really starts. Four on four, it's a bit more mass hunters. The Centauri are a bit stronger in general, but D Heaven's Aegis comes down and Manus defends his, for his first unit. You gotta be careful not to target fire it as it gets 500 extra HP. Some good target firing here. The f one of the Centauri is going down. Another Heaven's Aegis comes down, gives it a bash for speed. Sao Shin comes down, heals up the units, gets some more HP, and the I Cores come out. That's what the Gal is going for the I Cores. Extra damage versus light, and pretty much all units are light in the beginning of the game. It seems like Doug Gal just wants to get the Pyro Camp to begin with. A good bet to go for, getting that early Pyro. That's what they're fighting for. And yeah, it seems like Team Fire... Team Fire comes in with their Icors of their own, getting some good shots in. And another Heaven's Agent for Madness. Madness spending all his Pyro here, trying to get the enemy here. The real question, is it worth it? Did he get enough damage? It seems so as they're able to push their opponents back to the small tower. The Tower core here can be upgraded to a bigger tower and you really want to get those up as it's a healing spot. Salshin jumping in, getting their healing spot on, and very close battle to begin the game. Hard to say who... Actually, no. It's pretty obvious that Ice took a small lead in the game, got a few more kills, and especially are able to get the first Pyro Camp here. Getting those Pyro Camps is pretty essential. Gets uh, Is able to get more economy. Manus spent his first fire 
to get to a lot of his initial power to get to on heaven's ages was able to dominate those first fights getting extra shields on his units so yeah, i guess we can talk a bit about pyre pyre is the, is the third research of the game you can only get on the map it's generated naturally about one per three seconds or so oh shit the counter attack here comes the icors want to get some some worker kills gives the first workers if they get one of the legion tiles it's actually huge but yeah, he's gonna go for the fight instead. The opponents are coming in. Magi are in. Sao Shin healing up. Team Ice really going for the throat to begin with. Jumping into their opponents. It's generally a pretty dangerous move. It seems to be working out for them. Malakas or Red Harvest is gonna transform enemies into Keto. As the Keto spawn out, that's extra damage. And extra HP spells coming out. Team Fire is gonna have to start spending their, their spells if they want to survive the next hit. And more Ikers coming out. Both teams going for Ikers to begin with. Great Iker movement. And behind this, no, no expansions. Team Ice is really content on attacking and stopping their opponents from mining in their natural. So many Ikers here. And yeah, it's a fun build and uh, Team Fire are on the ropes already. You can look at the supply already on the ropes from this early, early attack. Man, I, I didn't even think that was such a committed rush. But it seems to be they're both expanded early. And yeah, just going to keep... Okay, so duck out transitioning to brood anchors. That's more of a defensive unit. Oh, that hurts. Absolvers are great to come out. When absolvers are out, their zone control units and do a lot of damage and splash them install units. But since they they've come out early and eliminated, it's gonna be hard. Heaven's Ages comes out in the units. A red harvest comes out from Scroop. Just try and barely survive. He's trying to get out. Incubators come out. Incubators might not be enough at this point. Production building comes down. That's super, production buildings are super important as they double supply buildings. You can't produce units, you can't get more units. Oh man, this is a, a tough one. He wants to get his dissolvers out. Dissolvers are great at defending. But there's just so many units now for Team Ice. Team Ice have complete dominance their opponents. There's no towers to help defend. Dissolvers coming out. And it seems like Team Ice has done it. The tower goes down for Scroop, but it's not the right location. He needs to defend his base, not those, not anything on the outside. And now we see a uh, dangers of attacking the power camp too early. Manus spent his power wisely, had complete control of the center. The first absolvers are out. That's going to help defend. Yeah, at least zone out the enemies. They can't really attack the, the ba main line. But the guy doesn't care too much. He's going to reposition, attack another spot. Yeah, finds a spot where he can attack the main. If any type of warden or scepters can come out, any type of air units, this army is still There's nothing that attacks here except one Zephyr. Zone control your own opponent's base. That's uh. That's a pretty good position to be uh, to be in to begin with. Things coming out. Okay, units are still spawning. Some fire singers here to try and help significant frog. But there's so many units here. The Icors taking control of everything. Incubators. The two absolvers here help defend against the next attacks. More absolvers ready to come out. That's really what you need now to stabilize. That stabilizing is gonna be hard as their opponents Doug Gal takes his third base on the other side of the map. And Absolvers defending as much as they can, as Absolvers and Sao Shin getting their healing spells up. Crazy aggression to begin the game. Team Ice seem primed to take it, especially with their own, very own zone control in their opponent's base. Man oh man. Um, yeah, Absolvers coming out, getting taken down immediately. Yeah, battles going on both sides. Red Harvest comes out. Harvest coming out from Doug Gal. He just wants to complete dominate. Small tower card to back it won't be enough to defend this as every single production building comes down and just gets completely destroyed. And in front of his group, Scrope is gonna call it Doug Gow and Manus. Take the first game. Uh, wow. What a first game to begin with the game day with. Okay, so teapot battles are to start it off. Double P teapot here, only one teapot starting out. Frog, Steepot is not gone out yet, so it's going to be a pretty big advantage for Team Ice, able to get those scouts in, get a bit of power to start. Let's see if they... yep. Honestly, I like this from Scrip. Don't be worried about last game. You lost, but that was mostly the incidence of the power and just... It just snowballed, right? Generally, there's some pretty good anti-snowball things that happen that the existing game, like getting the zone control absolvers, getting a defensive tower here. So some of the adjustments... Or at least one of the major adjustments I would do as group is get, make sure to destroy this tower. If you see your opponent coming really aggressively, put down the tower here. You're going to defend the first rush much more handedly. Not that it's impossible to defend, but it'll be easier. On this side, same thing for out going for double aggression. Doug Gal sees it, even pigs it on the map. That's a lot of units coming out. 
<laughs> yeah. So Nord Jari, actually, oh, there is a difference. Manus went for a, for Orzum instead of a Jari, so you don't have Sao Shin and and uh, the and the Separa to jump onto units. The Zentarion in general much better defending. They're very defensive focus units because they have ranged inside the hallowed grounds here. They're given by by the production buildings or the main base. Uh, one of the main aspects of getting this army out generally is either to destroy these, which give 10 powers, so getting these things out, and starting to go for a pyrocast before the opponents can, uh, just because well you have you have the early you have the early uh, the early legion halls, so a lot of units are forcing a few frogs. Hopefully he heads out onto the map. So yeah, killing these would be good. Scouts, you can kill up. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, scouts are going to be able to see you until you get some range units out. They, yeah, they just move faster early early game. On the other side, okay, Manus playing a much more defensive game. You can tell that by the fact you got the power, the, the offensive tower here. Oh, offensive. This more forward position tower. Uh, the tower has the advantage of healing up your units, so it's always a good a good point to head back to, heal your units, and attack again. So no units will ever truly die. <clears throat> or truly, uh, actually that's kind of the play style you want to play with as Orzum. You want to get your units, get some damage in, and then head back. Keep your units alive as there's more expensive. Back to the tower, heal them up, and then go for the next wave. And see, so an issue here might be for Scrope, he's overcompensating from last game. The thing I said about getting this tower in, that was great for last game where the opponents were aggressive. This game, they're not being all that aggressive. They're getting a tower here, uh, they're staying mostly in their base, they're playing a more macro focus game. No E for, oh yeah, e for here for Manus, Malus still hasn't gotten into it, he's getting mostly Icor. So you can do that by using the E for Surge, paying 50, uh, 50 Ether to get a surge of, uh, paying 50 alloy to get a surge of Ether, about 100. And then you can get uh, get pretty quickly, you can get into your Icor production and Icor's order to play. There's going to be some early aggression, so I won't fault, <laughs> I won't fault the um, Scrope, uh, actually Frog for getting this very early, playing super defensive. They want to get to the later stage where they believe they're going to be stronger for the game. It's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, first pirate fight of the game, there's probably some first blood. Icors are great at maneuvering back. At the forefront, the Zentari get in. Icors just want to shoot from the back while the Zentari attack. And the camp goes to Manus. There's no really reason for them to keep fighting here, especially if Malik coming out. As soon as Malik comes out here, there's no reason to keep fighting. Keto will come out for every dead unit. It's a bit too hard to defend this. Uh, Team Ice can push their revenge and get this, this tower core. On the other side, Frog. Okay, yeah, it's, it's taken out. Oh, they sniped the Magi, great move. All the units will now be melee. Won't be able to defend. But yeah, this is a great fight for them. It seems that Ice overcommitted a bit too far to the tower, and Man is gonna lose most of these units here, if not all. Uh, yeah, using his power spell, Scroop really wants to get down on his opponent. Uh, Team Fire pushing their opponents back, can destroy the tower at this point, and gonna take out the lead that their opponents were able to get from that first fight. You see, uh, supply-wise, it's still pretty equal, honestly. Get that tower, move out. The guy trying to get a few kills he can from the top of the hill. The way vision works in this game is that from the top of the hill, you can just kill stuff. I'm just listening to voice lines sometimes. It feels really epic. <laughs> okay, getting that second pirate camp. See, it happens pretty often that one team can control the pirate camps in the center. It's a really strong way to start a game. As soon as you have pirate camp, you get pretty powerful advantages. You can use your pirate spells, which are great for dominating fights here and there. It's one of the design concepts of the game, really. You get the pirate camps, and pirate camps allow you to... Uh, you get pyre without building more units, so it's going to win battles, but not the game generally. Oh man, let's go screw up. You can win this fight. Your allies coming in, trying to get the angle. Since um, since the Icors do have a line AOE, you want to get the line line attack in. Now Scroop probably wants this to turn into a power. Wants to like his opponents and turn this into a tower. As soon as this turns into a tower, it's going to be a defensive position, very powerful defensive position. And here comes Sigifian for a great unit good position here. Absolvers at the back. Anything that tries to jump on this will be heavily damaged. Zone control units. Yeah, probably wants to move them a bit forward. Scroop really wants to turn this into a power core as soon as possible. Uh, just to get some heal in and get a really strong defensive position. And you just come in, Magi at the back. Much better defensive position for Team Fire. Having the Magi giving Hallowed Ground, the Zentario going to have range attack. Of course, going up the hill is a mistake. You don't have vision up there. 
out of Ikors. Want to get some. Did get an arc. Troop is trying to create a good arc here, as that's one of the better things you can do here. And yeah, imagine at the top. Control the top of the hill. Keep control of the power of the towers. The powers. You might want to take out this camp as well. They're pretty confident to attack here. Bringing the rocks down from Stroop, just so he has an easier way coming down. And gotta be careful. Duck out's gonna take some kills in, get some free kills, as soon as he can. Absorbers at the back, gonna siege up. Oh, come on, you need to siege him up. There we go, for all perfect position. Halor at the back. Okay, Halor at the back is a pretty. It, it's, a, it's a range unit, it's an artillery type of unit, so they want to keep them at the back of the fight. Okay, Doug Gao coming in for the for the kill. He wants it. He wants this position. Comes in to use the red harvest. Going to try and mow for those units. Gets in, and any unit that dies is going to turn to a keto. He'd run for it, but that's a lot of absolvers. You don't want to attack into that many absolvers. Gets one kill. Going to get a second one. Pretty good snipe from Doug Gao. He's moving forward, and Manus does his best to keep going forward. The tower core is down, and Manus builds one of his own. He's going to have a really strong offensive position. And it's going to be in trouble again for Team Fire as they weren't able to secure that position. Really need that power, tower to be built faster here from Scrope, and their opponent's going to take advantage of that. Single Frog having his third base being built, he needs that. Needs the economy keep going. And they try to take back this position. They really need this position. Incubator's coming out. <laughs> Strong is, but is it enough? As the fight keeps coming, the Gallon Man is showing their worth. As they keep pushing forward here, and Frog moving back. Ooh man, Dervish coming in, great anti-light unit. They can deal with these light units like the Icors and, like and stuff in his Zentari. But Zakals are coming after the opponents. Great skirmishers, take out strong units. Honestly, Doug Gal just doing a perfect play here. Going in and going out again. Absolver is doing a lot of damage on the back. They have an AoE, so as, as they spin up, they're going to kill more and more units. Or super powerful pizza spin is here, getting on top of it. But Manus gets on top of one of them, snipes it, moves back to his tower foundation. Oh man, this is such a strong position for Team Ice once again. Really able to secure their small leads and snowball fights in the next one. And just winning and winning, moving in. This time the tower foundation is here to help defend, but there's not enough units. The Absolvers get sniped, and Team Ice are looking for their second victory for his 2-0 over their opponents. I believe in Frog and Scrub. Don't get it back to their next game, but this one is going to be over, and this best of three will go into, into Team Ice's favor. Pillar of the Heavens comes down from Frog one final time just to try and just to try and defend this push. And he have done a small advantage, but with so few units left, are they able to even defend this push? It's coming forward. Doug Gow coming forward. Unleashing the Frog as he keeps pushing forward. Blood Am Brood Anchor comes in. Zone control on your opponent's base. Screw getting his old red anchor is going to help on the defense. Yeah, Screw coming in with his own defense. And brood anchor is going to help. Snipes the one in the back. Halor's the back, dishing out some heavy damage, but get pushed back. And Team Ice are going to take a decisive loss on this fight. But they're reproducing at the back. More reinforcers are coming forward. More Halors. We're ready to push forward. It's going to be tough to break this position, though. Or is him all about being defensive, and he's being defensive in his opponent's face. Coming out of the choke point is always hard to take. Oh, scepters are out. Scepters are powerful, but Wraith Bows are already out for their opponents. The, the anti air units are there for the gal. Yeah. Yeah, Hallowers are. These uh, coffin, these uh, floating coffins ready from their back, getting their attacks into the bird anchor, dealing some heavy damage. And here come the units doing their best they can, but it's not going to be. It's, can be hard to push into this. This is the right composition though for Scrub. Scrub knows what he needs to do. He can jump on top of those howlers. He needs to get a shot in because every single time he gets a shot in, your opponents can get even more. It's a strong advantage for Manus. Team Ice can keep expanding, keep taking control of the map. They're three ba six bases to five for their opponents. The Frog luck uh, skillfully got his base up. That's really what you want to do here. Get your base up. Get, get any type of advantage you can get because they're so far behind. Manus getting his fourth base behind us all. It's gonna be hard to build up on this. Okay, here comes powerful coffins coming from the back. Trying to get out of here. They're getting out by the choke point. They're doing their best survive. Scepter's doing a lot of damage. Rape off the back. 
King of heavy damage, and the base explodes into a into an ash of angel fire. Yeah, focus firing out the brood anchor is a good move from uh, Madness, trying to get those out of the game. This fight is just ongoing and ongoing. They're trying to do their best. Survive a team fire surrounded on both sides. The best of their heavy units, but Madness 110 supply. 200 supply after the opponent's versus only 100, doubling the supply. Going for the ramp, but doesn't matter at this point. The towers, the Grove Guardian is still here to try and help defend. It got destroyed initially and barely has time to get built. Will it get built? Odd even gets built. Team Fire is again in, the, in dire straits as they try and survive this heavy, committed push. Hunting Ice, as uh, they're expanding behind it, really got their early advantages in. Snowballed in, got really that strong push in the front. And now it's just a matter of time until uh, Team Fire or no more left on the Ash of Battle. Yeah, unfortunately it's not really possible for Fire to win. They tried to break out, it was a pretty good attempt, but like with the defensive position that Mana set up. Well, defensive position. The position that Mana was able to set up, the opponents had nothing left. It was just uh, pushing forward for the final until their opponents have no choice but to GG out of the game. Boom. Explosion of blood here and explosion of angel fire on the other side. I really love the VFX they were able to put on to those buildings. They were pretty new. Yeah, he just wants to kill him. Yeah, tr yeah, triple expanding. It's gonna be it for Team Fire. They kinda lost the game at this point. They really need to get that tower down. That was the defensive position. They needed to keep going. Uh, but unfortunately, when they were able, able to, when they got stuck out and opponents took that position, it was too little too late for these players, and uh, yeah, he's changing a moral entirely. He's gonna go for a Jari instead. Santa Magico sticking it up with. Uh, I see, San Magico, his best immortal overall in the game's length has generally been Mala. He's been very good for all of them, but his ben best has been Mala. Santa uh, overall also has preferred Orzum, especially when Orzum had the early cheese. It's not much early cheese now, but once upon a time, there was cheese and. There was a lot of good cheese with Orzu, a lot of uh, proxy legion halls, uh, pillars would stay, so as long as you got the, the pillar down you would be able to do a lot of damage. So yeah, so hopefully it doesn't crash again. This time scouts go out immediately, I uh, don't know if that indicates anything about their aggressive le aggression levels. Separating the scouts here could be dangerous, but generally if you just run, you're not going to run into any trouble. Like, you need you need to really aim for the unit to get it. Oh no, he gets stuck. He gets stuck there. Oh, Santa going for the kill, and he gets the first kill. Free pyre for Santa. Uh, double expand here. Everyone's double expand. It's going to be a, not a cheese game at the very least, like last one. Even though last one wasn't exactly cheese, it was more of a eh, committed pressure to begin with. And inside like complete scouting, there's an Aether going down for Manus, so very economically greedy, honestly. Uh, if you start with the first base and then go for the Aether, Aether being, I think, 300 alloy, that's very, very expensive. If you look at the other side, uh, Doug Gao is going for a more traditional uh, Aether. He's going to get the Aether, um, Paul Aether Surge, which gets him some free Aether uh, for 50 alloy. So much cheaper, faster way to get your builds up and running. The other side, similarly, Santa went for a Nefer Surge as well. And uh, Magico just going for a lot of units early. Most likely won't go for Icors to begin with. Getting those two altars of the altars of the Worthy to begin with. Well, yeah, exactly. Going for a for a hollow. Great from the Gal is gonna get this Icors out as fast as possible. <laughs> Icors is a really great early game unit again when there's so many light ones. And Santa. Okay, there's something Santa likes to do here. He's gonna keep this unit here, and he's gonna build a Rook of Ira. Rook of Ira being a big tower you can just drop down his Orzu. And he's gonna attack the base here. If he goes Receptors on top of it, he has full control of his opponent's base. It's a very cheeky play, very annoying play, but uh, it's one games before and Santa's gonna try and be cheeky again to, it's not, it's, it's cheeky. Uh, it's, it's not cheesy at all, it's just cheeky. On this side, Togao can try and steal it from, try and last hit the unit. If he gets a last hit, he will steal the kill from his opponents. He will get the power camp. Uh, okay, just trying to get some unit kills. Almost got the mass under there. Not worth it. Yeah. 
If he gets it, it's very good, but he's being chased away. A bit of a... Expensive use of Heaven's Aegis when they weren't really going for this fight there. I'm sure I agree with it. Um, but it's okay. It's not. It's We're still in the early games. So there's not too much going on. <coughs> Santa pushing forward already. This is going to be dangerous for Team Ice. Team Ice is going to have to have a lot of units to defend at home. Never Heaven's Aegis comes up on Madness' side this time. Tries to keep his units alive. And yeah, he keeps them alive. Icors are out, so it's going to be hard for them to keep pushing as soon as, as, soon as the Icors are out. It's really hard to keep uh, pushing as you're just going to be destroyed by them. Santa, 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 getting a gift of his uh, weird, weird attacks here. Uh, so yeah, Match goes the one that wants to get as much power as possible. That's kind of surprising. I don't remember the exact power cost for the Rook of Ira, so maybe Santa thinks he's going to have enough pretty soon. Yeah, okay. Magico wants it to be known he's building something here. Both teams. Okay, yeah, they, they can probably dislodge us, honestly. This lot of Safari just need to attack at the same time. Blood will make it make it harder. Salchen. Oh, but Malice Spell comes down with Red Harvest. It's time to move back. You don't want to attack into this. Every dying unit turns into a Keto. It makes it that much harder to kill. And yeah, see, Keto spawns as a dead unit. Just wait for the spell to run out, then try it again. The issue, of course, with waiting is that more units are going to come out. And as more units come out, it harder it gets to, to defend. Magi are out, makes it even harder to defend here. Uh, all this entire will be ranged units now. In this little zone. The scouts here, he wants to detect. Uh, Man is like seeing around the map. Okay, going for a round. At least gets the pirate camp. Always gets a bit of pirate in. Dug out. Yeah, Man is almost out of fire. Santa not being too cheeky. Is he? Okay, slowly going up. Magico is slowly going up the tech tree. Let's see if his next is the Angel Arm. He has the Soul Foundry to get the medium units. Okay, he's going for this round. And this time he gets the Red Harvest out. Tries to go for a few kills. Gets the reinforcing units. Gets a Magi. Tries to get the Magi. Is he going to get it? Oh, Magi barely survives there. Good micro from Santa. Keeping it alive. And Manus comes in for a reinforcement, but it's a little too little too late. We're going to try their best, but at this point, Teamfire have a lot of units. The Magi healing like crazy. Selshin coming in. So probably jumps on top of units, healing them up. Some of the some of the Atari do end up dying, and Team Fire look look ready to take this this first battle. The other side, that's a good take, good good idea on the other side. Get the Major are still loaded up, uh, but Major are healed up, and Team Mice has to retrieve from this fight. It's not a fight you want to keep taking here. With two armies against one, he's getting a few extra good kills. Getting those Major, no oh, Major survives. Final Major survives. Keeps this unit alive with Heaven's Aegis. It's a boring unit to keep alive. The Salshin are very powerful. We don't want him to die. Side. Uh, oh, yep. Called it. Angelirium coming up. He's going to try and get a Rook of Ira here. But unfortunately for him, this the building is going to see it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> He's summoning his Rook of Ira. Wait, it, it's got to be seen, right? Yeah, it's seen. The opponents see it. They see the Rook of Ira going up. They're going to take care of it. So this has worked before, but the buildings were placed in the wrong places to, for Santa. That tried to be cheeky. Said he's just going to take control of the map. And the other side, Salshin are so powerful. They give an extra speed boost on the units. They're able to jump onto the units and get some extra kills like that. Griffin for Manus. Getting some kills on the retreating units. And there's a Mala coming out. A Red Harvest coming up. Red Harvest really makes us hard to attack into this. We keep attacking, but it's not the time. As soon as Red Harvest pops, units dying so slowly. It makes it even harder. So much healing coming up. All those magi really giving up on their units, keeping them alive. The other side. Okay. They're doing their best. Team Fire slowly expanding. Team Ice are really doing a decent job at surviving so far. It's hard to say who is really in the lead. Uh, Angel, the tech is coming out. It's gonna go for Scepter, so the Harass is gonna be very powerful. Manus probably wants to turn this into a true tower to help defend his main base. Scepter is just gonna go rampage around the base as soon as they can, as soon as he gets a good amount of units. On the other side, okay, Brood Anchor is coming down. Brood Anchors are great at defending positions, zone control units. But the thing is, the zone you want to defend is generally on top of the hill here. And with the top of the hill already taken care of, it's going to be harder to uh, do the damage you want. And go up the hill. Always dangerous to go up the hill. 
Oh, my special brood anchor of her own on the other side. Oh no, Selshin going to the brood anchors get completely pummeled as they try to do some damage, but nothing happens. They just die from there. The other side, the Icors try to do some damage, trying to go up the hill. Uh, the brood anchors just get shot out before they can make it. Now, Team Ice needs to do some type of damage, something they could work on, especially if the Icors on the side. They can try going to the other side and doing some damage. Uh, but the Scepter. Yeah, actually, the Scepter is ready to do some damage. Wraith Bows are out, so they're able to take care of it, not before a few of their units are killed. The other side. Yeah, Team Ice needs to do some damage. Team Fire are pretty well secured here. They're both on three bases each. Uh, Santa opting for this base. Okay, no, Santa's just double expanding here, going to up to five bases. Magico playing a bit safer, going to three bases. They don't really want to take this one. There's no Aether on this one, uh, on this base. Sometimes it's better to play it slow. And this side, Manus. Manus the Menace going up to even more units. Getting up the Zephyr. Yeah, Magico just wants to get a few kills here in the scepters, forcing his opponents up the hill where you can't see, but up to, to the brood anchors! The Cystics and our little our little suicide guys are coming in trying to do damage. On the other side, Men the Gal is trying to attack on the other side. There's even Omnivores here for Magico. He is setting up a whole base here to try and defend static defense and just trying to choke out their enemies in the middle of the map. Of course, there's enough bases for opponents to take. There's three bases each, but they need more than that. They need more than three bases, especially... You need to do some damage outside of here. You can't keep attacking into the Cystic Crawlers. Cystic Crawlers are very powerful. Zone control. They might want to try and attack other positions on the map. Get their own zone control here so opponents can't really jump on them. And then send some forces on your place on the map. Team Ice are just being squeezed in their own base. Uh, yeah, Brood Anchor slowly making their way forward. And uh, yeah, more Omnivores make being made. Static defense in the center of the map. Complete map control is Santa taking his six base. I think it's six bases, Santa. You're not supposed to have six bases this early. More and more units popping up. Whew. And there's the Scepter counterattack. Yeah, so Scepter's first attack every 15 seconds is very powerful. So if you want to snipe some some buildings like he just did, uh, well, that's what we do. We just wait for your four attacks to snipe up. And then you try to take control of the middle of the map, but these are... Team Ice at this point is just being choked out slowly but slowly. Just now that Magical lost the play, just getting up in units. And choking out the map slowly but surely, building up. Oh, we hadn't seen these yet. Uh, the Ark Mothers, oh okay. I wanted to see their faces there. Numbers get taken out, and Team Fire slowly showing their opponents. They try to go up the hill, the hill full of omnivores and blood wells. They should get a hard position break at this point. And yeah. Bill is getting taken down. At least the scepters are not causing damage anymore. Man, as can see, there's a base in the top right, but there's nothing really you can do to deal with it. Sister <laughs> Crawlers coming out one at a time. Bam. That's a lot of damage coming down. Uh, yeah, Team Ice choked out of the map. Of the map. Slowly but surely, slow pushing their way forward. Right, they're just moving, moving the stone control unit one step at a time. And uh, Crawlers, okay, Six Crawlers of their own. Going to do a lot of damage to these units. As soon as they exit, to exit the uh, exit the route way, though, they kind of just die immediately. They need the route way to stay alive. Oh yeah, thanks. Thanks, Manus, for showing me this. <laughs> I had missed this uh, this drop of this uh, this really annoying counterattack from Santa. Earl is being very annoying with his scepters. He's one of those guys that loves to do it. Rain of blood comes down as rain starts raining from the sky, raining from above. Pillar of the heavens comes down to Santa. This is their final push. They want to take out their opponents. They're going for the final push. The pillar comes down. They're going to take out the base. There's no more base after their opponent. Magical even takes base on his opponent's side as. So Gal tries his best to survive here, but but Manus' army is already completely routed. There's nothing left there. There's two versus one. The guy has a good army supply, but it's too little too late as the throne swords jump onto their opponent's army. Zentari pushing forward and Malice spells, making sure that there's nothing left of it. Keto's gonna jump up and pop them into their opponent's bases. 
Scepter's coming from the back to kill those important incubators. And as nothing is left on their base, Team Ice is forced to retreat unto their own natural. And yeah, this is uh, nothing less if they have been squeezed out of the map as Team Fire take their opponent's bases. Thrones coming forward with their final blades, blading down into the, into the wrath of their opponents. And nothing will be left as these forces. It is a good position for the gal, I'll give him that. They're, they're defending good position, their opponents are choked in. They can really do a lot of strong strong weapons. Finding the Wraith Bow takes out the final big units. Yeah, not much left. And as soon as they head out themselves to the choke point, that's when they run into their own amount of trouble. Try to jump in, and nothing is left. Ah, uh, good try on these guys. Good try. The other side, the gal is barely surviving. Ah uh, yeah, so this is the God's Head's ability. They take HP from the units. This is why you see the shields here, the Lido Cutter. There's so much of it because he took HP from his own unit that to be even more surviving in the in the attack here. Yeah, the Typhus taking the shields are gone from all these units, but the throne takes it all for themselves as the thrones move forward and all you hear right now is the swords popping up on all the units. There's almost nothing less of these units. The gal with an admirable fight. Unfortunately, uh won't soon have to GG out this game. He's doing his best, but supply doesn't lie. It is 90 against 300 supply here. Base goes down to confetti of angel blood and fire. Go down one at a time, and they're heading for the main bases as Santa finish up his opponents, and there will be nothing left of their opponent's blood. Dangerous place here. Ah yeah, so anyone tuning in, who will be also the one v one tournament I'll be casting as well. Uh, for now, it's just a 2v2 for Swiss Weekly. We're going to have a few more games today. As uh, Team Santa takes up this the first game that's best of three. Nothing left to say really about this game. Haldor's coming in from the back. More and more units come in. GG is called for Madness. The girl's gonna have to agree sooner or later, and uh, yeah. Actually, I'm not sure if Madness called the GG or just all his bases were taken out, and the GG just popped up automatically at that point. You don't want people to GG, right? If all buildings are out, the game is out. Let's hope next game is able to get started as well. Yeah, there's still a bit of presence from Madness on the other side of the map. Oh, that's enough. Yeah, one one is gonna be fun. Uh, feel free to join everyone. It's open to all, so just join the one who won. It will be a fun time. There we go. Cool having a rant. Oh, all Aru today. Very spicy. All Aru matchup. We're gonna have two Zoles, two Malas. That's gonna be fun. A different type of gameplay. Yeah, exciting times. It's lunchtime and I didn't I didn't have breakfast, so hopefully this game I might just oh, actually I actually have nuts. I have nuts now. But yeah. Nuts uh important part. Always eat nuts guys. Uh they're they're great for your health. Keep you not be too hungry. That and water. Highly recommended. So yeah, anyone watching, don't forget to take a sip of water right now. I'm gonna do it as well. Good to stay hydrated. Game two of this best of three. Right now it's 1-0 for Team Fire, Magical and Santa. No teapot battles to begin with this time. Manus tries to get get a kill up, but Magical is ready for it. Takes a bit more damage, so has to be careful. Ooh, gets a nice shot there. Manus is a bit of danger. <laughs> Magical gets it. Teapot gets healed after killing another teapot. So he's ready to look for his next target. The other side, Duggal. Just missed out, took a lot of damage. Next teapot. It's going to be here soon. Not quite. Double expansion on the team fire, and on the other side, the gal expanded, and Madness definitely did not expand. He's going for a double. But as all that does make sense. One of the gameplay patterns you want: get a bit of pyre early, then do as much damage as you can to your opponent. Santa on this side playing Zol as well, but he's fine winning a bit before getting his uh, his levels up. 
yeah, uh, feel free to ask questions, chat if you have anything. I I know this game very well in general. Like I've I followed the development and I know a lot of stuff. I'm allowed to say more than than the dev team because I'm not a dev team, so that means I'm allowed to I'm allowed to uh, talk about stuff that ha hasn't been revealed yet and are not sure. Of course, anything I say is completely and it's it's not fact verified because it might not happen. But there were some old plans that are now deleted that might not happen anymore. So feel free to ask anything you want. The dev also in the Discord are super nice. Always willing to help out. Feel stuff. Oh man. Four teapots versus one. And completely destroy. Poor Manus. He thought he had this covered. But not this time. Oh, okay, that's unfortunate. Losing a bone stalker before it even starts. Yeah, you just want to get in that circle. Yeah, once you have that circle. So you can get start leveling up, but I'm not sure that counted. Oh, well, this is unfortunate for Manus. I, I'm, I don't think... I don't know if the hunting around counted, because I don't see him leveling up. That's really the, the, the goal of this initial thing. You want to get the power camp very early. Then you get to level up, result to level 2. It makes her much more powerful. You can try a second time. Second power camp, but this time he doesn't have the hunting rounds to help out with it. Hmm. Unfortunate for Manus, really. You want to get that, those levels of Zola as fast as possible. Okay, Santa Claus has his hidden here. Hopefully in the next one of the next version, Spectres are going to be able to see invisible units. Right now, invisible is just to you and your ally. I'm not allied to anyone, so I can't see it. Yeah, I got to be careful here. There we go. Oh god, he's in trouble. Magical comes in. Oh, Magical steals the power. Oh, that hurts for Madness. Of course, here he killed more about... Oh no, he gets the kill. If he gets the kill, it's worth it. Oh, he's gonna get so many kills. That's so cool. Two Zoles coming out, but one Zoles level three and dead. I uh, got focus Fire really quickly. Generally, you want to get to like level five for more HP. That was uh, such a quick kill, and Santa really taking advantage of this fight. Focus Firing is all. And today we learned about Zoe is good, but doesn't have that much HP. Try and summon her in the back, or else you can have so much trouble. <laughs> yeah, I actually love hidden how they do hidden in the game. It feels really smart. In the way that they remove the binary aspect of it. Do you have Detector or not? All units that are hidden, that's just one of their character aspects. And if you have hidden, uh, it's going to be a level of hidden of units close to it. So if your unit is... A range of free if you're 300 close it you're gonna get it so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool to have that and that way you don't actually die to uh, dts or anything i'm saying that but santa claus might be the one to go for something like that i don't see like the whitewood reapers can be very annoying for that and magical going for the harass immediately gets a kill yeah it gets the whole aloe line there Dugao is coming in time to defend. They're sending their whole units back, which I don't agree with. There's not that many. And you just want to deflect them. Not necessarily... Yeah, Icros are fast enough. You can only deflect them. That will be enough. And the other side... Yeah, Santa Claus. Trying to still level up a bit more. Sorry for my crunching if you hear it. I'm just hungry and nuts are great. Here comes the base, trying to come into it, but it's going to be hard for the gal. Similar is going to be hard for the other side, as Manage has complete control of this side. He's putting Hunting Ground next to it, wants to level up his uh, his Zoe as fast as possible. Okay, the trying to indicate, let's attack together. And Manage is going to come in a bit slowly, but there we go, he's coming in, he's attacking, doing as much damage. Zoe comes in, Zoe comes in for the opponent, I don't know. Oh no, Zoe gets sniped by Manage again, that's unfortunate for him. Another snipe on Zoe is really to play, and Santa keeps her soul alive, can get a lot of kills here, can be able to level up very soon. Yeah, Santa Claus barely levels up with Zoe, and is now level 4 Zoe, he can cast a great hunt. We try to keep moving forward. Yeah, it's going to be difficult here. As on this side, Team Fire take this fight again. And that's really what the often differentiates Magical and Santa, they're very good at taking their fights, winning the fight when it matters. It's a, it's a big skill in, in, in any RTS, but sometimes not talked about enough. Especially in other games like StarCraft, where it's all about getting that macro down. Just want to see you don't have to worry about it much. Winning those fights is so important. Ooh, if you could have gone to Bros. Brood Anchors, that would have been so cool. Okay, really, 
Okay, this time they don't want it to happen like last game where they lost control of their own high ground here. Having control of it is really essential to keep control of the map, to keep control of the pacing. Okay, man is going for the counter attack. Love it. I love these counter attacks. I wish they did more of them. Try and get this base down before it happens. Force their opponents to make a decision. Do they defend this part or defend this part? You don't want to attack with their zone control, right? And now the blinkers are left alone. You do a lot of damage, but there's nothing left to defend them. You can probably take him now. If you can take the Brood Anchors, that would be a great fight. Uh, but doesn't want to risk it even more. Reverend Manus gets the base down, but now he got, needs to get out. He needs to get out of here. He gets completely surrounded. That's not what I meant by get out. I don't mean get out of the world of living, Manus. He needs to survive. Losing all his units. Losing... Getting a lot of blood to, Ma to Mala. And, uh... Yeah. It's another big thing in uh, all RTS. You need to be able to kill, to attack, and then run away before your own units die. Just because Defenders of Ashes is pretty strong. Once you, once you kill something, you have to back up before it's too late. Okay, getting both Brood Anchors there. Oh! Just missed it! Just barely missed it. That was so close. Would have been great. And of the pyre vents as well, having a different type of pyres, the one where you just find whoever's last standing on it. And these where they just rebuild very quickly, but gives you a small defensive advantage in the middle of the map. Yeah, these 2v2 battles are all about learning how to attack with your with, with your with your ally to make sure everything works. It's magical getting that base up. Santa Claus still on two bases. That's okay because their whole points are all on two. Oh, perfect timing from the Gal. Get it in time just to save the units. Perfect scouting. Great vision. And oh, Behemoth from Santa Claus already. The, the ultimate army, the ultimate unit in the his old army arsenal is out and ready to attack. There's gonna be a lot of keto with all those incubators from Dogal as well. Not gonna be enough. Here comes Here comes the Behemoth. Coming in strong and powerful. Doing their best to kill their opponents, it's not quite enough. Oh, there's always summon. Level 5 is all. That's good. Level 5 is all for mana. That's perfect. You do want Zolt to, to be about level 5 now, but. There's so many Behemoth from the opponent. Like, Behemoth are super powerful. And, yeah, Magical even used his blood when it went. Oh, did he? They look bigger than normal. One of the mal abilities you can make your units bigger and more powerful. Just have more HP in general. So, I think he might have done that here. Yeah, okay. Team Ice really needs to be checking their opponent's side of the map more to figure out that, yeah, there's bases here and you have to deny them as much as possible as they're slowly taking their own. So I like this scout from Madness because you get to see their opponent here, but I think he missed the base here, or maybe not. Unfortunately, while they're attacking here, they're going to lose their own third base, which can be dangerous. Going for fire or are you attacking the bases? Lose the Grove Guardian. Painful. Lose the base as well. Yeah, if they can get a full surround here, that'd be amazing. Okay, they get the surround. They're jumping on top of it. Not gonna lose the base, most likely. Ah, uh, Dugal's not helping right now because... Okay, there's units in his base as well. He wants to defend that. And... Oh no, Madness is alone for this fight. We're against all those behemoths. And it makes sense because... Team Fire is so good at splitting their attention, forcing their opponent to attack in three different locations at once. He kept the base alive, but it might be too little too late. Dugal's coming in to help his ally. But is it enough? Madness lost so many units there. This comes in. The behemoths are attacking him in the back. The, I the Kedos are coming in, but it's too little. Zoe comes in one last time to try and do the damage that she can. Try to level up, try and get to level 5. And Madness does his best. As the Underspines come in, don't have a full strong. And the other side, behemoths just did a count complete, com complete dive bomb the opponent's face. Because Santa knows that Magical's okay thing in this fight, but was he really okay? Team Ice is pushing forward. Team Fire loses their position. Behemoths are still in the main base. Still doing as much damage as they can. Really want to take down the main base here. And with this many units, what we really need is Aerox. Aerox being the suicide... There's a lot of suicide units, honestly, for Aru. You want the suicide units to come in, and uh, I think it takes three of them to kill one Behemoth. It, it becomes pretty worth it at that point. There's a lot of Wraith Bows here, so Dugal might be able to do it. At least take out a few of them. 
And there's... If they can take down those units, that's a lot of supplies stuck into uh, to Magico. You just need to keep the surround alive and... Of course, being stuck in this base could also be dangerous just from all the units here. And Zoe comes in as well to help, but Zoe can be focus fired down at this point. Yeah, focus fired down immediately. She gets a level 5 at least. That's the point of right? Hit and run, hit and run. And while they're trying to hit and run, Magico just hits like a hammer and nothing else happens. There's the Aerox, there's the explosion. There goes most of them. Yeah, that's how you deal with them. You just gotta Aerox them in. And send the supply dropping like crazy as all this game you must get taken out. But now, the Gal is stuck in the corner. If both armies can jump onto him here, it's gonna be in trouble. That's a good army from the Gal. Let's see if Magico can do it. Really great hunt for Santa Claus. All vision is taken out from their opponents. More damage to everything. Everything is just a bit faster to fire. Jumping on their opponents. The Gal is stuck in the corner. Can he survive this bush? The Red Harvest comes in, but all those behemoths are taking are taking them down. Manus is coming in as fast as he can, but it's too little, too late. As Dugout's army has already been decimated. Manus coming from the back. A surround is always good, but a blood brood anchor comes in, and Cystic Crawlers are gonna force it. Manus to just jump back. As the Gal's army is apparently surviving in the back. But this might have been too little at this point, as Team Fire has the entire east part of the map. The guy was trying to expand, but Ma Santa is also expanding. Santa lost most behemoths and was able to rebuild them. Those are expensive units. These huge blimps keep doing more and more damage as he moves into the right in the center of the map. Man, different, uh, difficult, difficult take right now. They're doing their best, uh, jumping in, the mass hunters, jumping on top of the wraith bows. Wraith bows, that's what they're called. And the guy was worried again. Yeah, Menace would. Yeah, Menace has to take back his base again. Did he never get the second Efer? Oof. I mean, you don't need it, I guess, depending on your strategy. But it's still pretty useful to get them. Coming in again. Santa Claus is just attacking. See, this whole point of Behemoth, right? You can just launch the attack and then run back. They need the Aerox. Like, uh, Aerox are the, are the counter for this. You just make a ton of Aerox, jump in and suicide them in, but value-wise, it's worth it. They can't do any more damage. Wraith Bowls are fine, but here it's the Aerox, the Suicide Bombers found in the Bone Canopy that can deal with these really well. Jumping into the kill. Cystic Crawlers every single time. I love them. Keto coming in. Keto trying to do their best to do the damage. But it's not quite enough. Oh my God. See, this is perfect because they're... <laughs> okay, Underspines are cool because they slow them down. So they have a slowdown effect, so... Brave Post, they might be able to do some damage. But this one is just about killing as many bases as he can. Manus is in a lot of trouble, never able to rebuild his main base. Never expanded beyond his natural. A lot of trouble for Manus. Manus, my favorite Manus, is not able to make it work this time around. And another base down. So, Behemoths are pretty cool because they are about hit and run. They shouldn't be too oppressive because their loads are pretty slow to unload. Um, and yeah. They're generally pretty slow. So you can take them out pretty quickly. Also, without the long range, you really have to commit to them to do some damage, which is one of their weaknesses. Compared to like StarCraft 2's Broodlords, which they're pretty, they're very strong. Also, they they, they got them closer to this level of uh, Behemoth. Difference mostly being in the um, in the range aspect. Oh no, the range also got reduced in the speed aspect for the new uh, Broodlords. And here comes the kill, the Grove Garden comes down. Trying to long distance mine here with a with a symbiote, but might not be enough. At this point, Team Fire has it in the bag. There's not much that Team Ice can do. Madness is only 13 supply and barely enough money to keep going. How slow is he at mining the space out? 4,000? 
Was Madness that late to take it to space? He only had 4,000 now? It's kind of crazy. Yeah, no, both teams played play, play very well. It was nice to see. Uh, next game, I'm trying to probably go back. <coughs> I'll go back to Frog, whoever Frog is playing, unless it's a. Uh, unless it's Magical versus Santa, then I'm not, not as interested. As uh, it was a 2 0 from Nugao and Madness against Magical Santa, so I don't want to watch under. Like at that point, it's going to be pretty obvious on the result beforehand, so. Here we played both teams that went 2 0 2 0 against their opponents, so it was pretty interesting. But yeah, Santa and Magical just have too much experience in the game. They have been uh, playtesting this like crazy. They're probably the two most active playtesters in the game, in general, along with one of the with some of the developers. Well, the design part of the developer, at least. And that's from the Degal. Going for the counterattacks is a smart move. A smart move as in they should have done this a long time ago to try and force the game into a better place. Final kills. Final units, final kills. Honestly, Great Hunt is one of my favorite abilities in the game. Okay, so what do we know about these guys? I don't know that much. I, we haven't seen Fatal Exit and Off Fun yet, which is why I wanted to cast this one. Admiral Dogal and Menace, double mallow, okay. Did pretty decently in the first game, they won 2 then lost 2 against uh, the reigning champions. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, now we're at this one. So this one's going to be pretty... And then uh, I haven't seen the other two, so I don't know how they're going to do. I'm hoping they're going to do great, but it's hard to say, right? We're um, going to see soon enough. Ahman did say he liked to to do uh, some type of rushes, and they were in a chat together, so they're able to communicate what they want to do. So let's see. What are they up to? So team fire Zolajari. That's pretty good for some rushes, honestly. Uh, against double Mala. Mala's not the most defensive, but she's good enough. Yeah. Always gotta be careful about these towers. Okay, double expansion. So that makes sense. Team Dugan Menace playing it safe. Everyone's playing it safe, honestly. There's, if, if there's any type of rush, it might be a timing attack of some sort, which is always fun. But so far, no such luck. Hiding the, the scout here is pretty fun. Always good to find a little hiding, hiding spots for the units once the, they move out you want to know where to attack. Yeah, kill the scouts. Yeah, scout count battles are pretty fun. Giving free power, so not too much... Uh, it's not too much of a loss to lose it, it's not too, but it's still nice to just gain it. Just a nice little balance there. The game just has a very fun design in general. Oh wow, wow! Okay, so he's doing economical cheese. And the opponents aren't going to see it for a while. So let's see what they decide to go for. Yeah, two Legion Halls, that's fine. Don't forget to drink water, everyone. I'm drinking water, eating nuts. That's how we survive. Oh. Who's in the power fight there? And I think Pyra should be pretty far behind the Pyra fighting just because triple expand, but it really doesn't look that way. 
Keeper. All you want here is the last last hit, which they did get. So that's a good play from Team Ice. Getting the last hit on this. Yeah, the tower just mostly stopping their opponents from getting it. Offman trying to get some Zoe power. He needs to get at least a kill, but unfortunately won't. Really want to level up Zoe as fast as possible. Ah, uh, but not this time. Not this time. There's Santa go. Yeah, nothing too big so far. No big rushes, no big pushes. Everyone just trying to feel each other out. Icor's doing a good amount of damage there. And yeah, really fighting over this tower. This is... Oh man, a full surround of Sabari. Kinda want to move them back, I guess, but it doesn't matter, they're dead. Dead as they should be. Humans. Ball Stalker is a bit more powerful than Mass Hunters. We just gotta be careful there, that's why Icors are such a good early game unit, especially in this matchup. The other side of things, what are they attacking towards? I really need to know the buildings now. I think that's the other side, I'm not sure. Yeah, unfortunately, the blood well is probably going down here. Yeah, it's really good at healing units. Oh no, he gets to save it. It's just in time. Clutch play from Madness coming from the back. The tower, you want to take out the tower so they stop generating fire. But the units are often more important here. Another under Zoe summon. He wants to keep attacking when she summons Zoe. You want to get some kills up. Nice. He gets the kill. He gets to level 2. Still not quite level 2. We'll get there soon. He's getting up there, trying to do their best. We're just coming up, trying to do some damage. Um, that was a great cast from. Um, from Offman putting the Heaven's Aegis here, keeping that, Ze Ze that Zephyr barely alive with the 500 extra shields. But right now they're having trouble getting into this fight. I see Ice is getting all over them, jumping on top of the units. The units are almost all dead. You know, best, but Zoe comes in from Offman from the back, but it's going to be focused fire down quickly by Dugal. Doesn't want to get too many levels. Level 3 it is. And Team Fire are routed at their tower. Tower would have been good to upgrade here to get a bit more powerful. The other side, Team Ice. Just getting the damage in, killing at least the workers as they're finally pushed back to Team Fire. Team Fire, if we get, get some Zakals and Zephyrs in. Zakals and Zephyrs are both heavy units, so won't be won't get the extra damage that i generally do to everything. So good for them. Their side, fight's still happening. Tower. Okay, here we go. Okay, getting the embiggening spell on some of those mass hunters. The mass hunters getting big. Same for Femme de Gal, wants to get those Icors strong and powerful. But at this point, Team Fire has a pretty good defense. I don't really see them breaking, can they? Having the hill is definitely a big advantage here. Being able to take advantage of the high ground vision while the opponent have nothing. But is it too little too late as they try to jump forward? Okay, yeah, going to the base. Trying to get that pillar down. So yeah, Team Fire pushed him back. If we look at the oh wow, actually 80, 80. That's a really good army value. And the cows like that won't be taken out by the I cores, which is uh, the guy's biggest army for the longest time. Of course, being on top of the hill is a good, good strategy for now. Absolver setting up. Yeah, as the cows are perfect for dealing with this. Very straightforward game so far, both of them trying to take control of the center, uh, which is a big part of Lost Province, but of course there are the sides of the map, they can try and go around them. Both teams taking it to third base, although Fire has it for a lot, long, longer time. Yeah, the god trying to tell, trying to let Manus know that he needs help right now. There's a lot of units coming, Absolver is sieging up in the right position, when Zone Control or Siege up is going to be hard to take that position even more. Root Anchors are sieging up on the other side. 
And that's a good red harvest, but is it going to be too little too late? If they jump on top of the units and base dice, that's about the Gauls team fire really have a strong time attack here. Jump off the units. Heaven's Age is great, taking a lot of damage from that Absolver. Absolver does not much damage. Camp is completely surrounded. They get taken out. As team fire are finally routed, but not before doing a good amount of damage. And you look at the supply, it's still pretty equal here. They were able to reproduce their units pretty well at the back of this. Now it's just about not losing too many units from behind this. Menace making fronts, making those little mosquitoes ready to attack into everything. But yeah, here's a good defense from Mothman here. Gain that tower core, being able to just defend a bit. I'll let him know after the game that he can uh, upgrade that into into a building. Oh, they're trying to push in, but with the two the two absolvers at the back are doing so much damage here. You see that that unit trying to pull back. It's going to be not quite enough. It's the same as the brood anchor here. Going to try to do damage, but uh, not sure it has enough damage going for it. They've been trying to move forward. Absolvers rechanging up. Absolvers do take about like six seconds to get to their full potential of uh, AOE. So during their first six seconds, every time you re-siege them, they get a bit weaker for the for initial duration. But once they're fully sieged, so much power in them. Minus the god double expands to really take back his economy that he lost there. Of course, Pedro X said, taking his fourth base as well. This is going pretty well for these guys. Hey, Hydraulics, nice to see you. Um, yeah, we're having the Swiss Sweetly today. I know, right, Hydraulics? The game is amazing right now. It's a great spot. The VFX and the music really adding a lot of lighting to it. There's always the back doing so much damage. Dugout and Manus have to be careful. Jumping into zone control like that is always dangerous. But it seems like, it seems like they're going to be able to take it forward. Going to the last game. And... Okay, they made it. They have done it. They have survived. Uh, they have thrived through this all. Uh, the god trying, still trying to get his third and fourth base off. It takes quite a while to get up. Nice snipe on that first absolver. The absolvers are really the meat of this army. The rest is more about defending it. The absolvers are the big damage dealers here. Uh, are there any upgrades? No one has upgraded so far in the game. Uh, Frums coming in from back. There's no end here. Here, there's only two Zephyrs. The Frums are coming as a complete surprise. Good play from Madness. Uh, needs to focus fire the right units, absolvers as much as possible. If you can kill the absolvers, the rest of the army is not too high on the damage density. And he gets a few of them. Madness has so many problems here. Not much anti here. There's just one underslide, a few zephyrs. And he's they are routed. Team Fire thought they had it. But the problems from Madness come in clutch, and nothing is left from Team Fire that can survive here. Hey, Hal! Uh, Hydraulics, there's currently a 2v2 tournament happening, which is why we're having a bunch of 2v2s of that tournament uh, right now. Um, besides that, it's mostly just joining lobbies that have twos. Yeah, you can just ask for uh, for playtest. There's going to be another tournament, that's, but it's going to be 1v1 tomorrow, unfortunately. So still be fun if you join it, Hydraulics. It's going to be at uh, uh, 11 EST, which is 17 Europe time. So at 5 p.m. your time tomorrow. But yeah, for 2v... Damn, good job, Manus. Those... Like, you were... Team Ice was losing the fight so badly, but then those guys came in. They don't have the highest damage, but they got to snipe all of those Absolvers. And because of that, there's nothing left from Team Fire. Team Ice still doing their best. Of course, uh, there's enough Zephyrs here that are going to be able to snipe him away. But now they need to defend this push, and they're in a better position. Team Ice got in a good position, have a good arc. Team Fire is slowly trickling in. They have a lot of units, but is it enough, or is it too little too late? Doug Gow's strategy of double expanding was pretty good, especially as Madness keeps his opponents at bay with his, with his units there. Ah, man. Venus coming in strong, trying to do their damage as much as they can. But not much happening here. There's a cause. There's a, a slightly bigger L for, for, for Fire's time. And so many units here, a lot of ability, a lot of blood just splashing all over the battlefield as units die everywhere. Uh, Zephyr's gonna win step forward, gonna teleport closer to your opponent to try and take out the valuable units. On the other side, Team Blue trying to do their best, but there's really just not that much left. The mice are getting routed once more as the army of Fado exit, just really overwhelming their opponents here. Those the cows are really, really worth their weight in gold right now. Uh, but there's a huge arc for Team Ice. Finally, Man is able to do it. We're we'll all of this. The Frums are gonna maybe take out a full base. Yeah. 
could take out the mining here. There's finally some defense going to set up. But at this point, you need a defense in your main base here. You need to set up the defenses. You need to set up the defenses here. And yeah, they're heading back to the, the base here. Uh, but this is a little too little, too late. They try to get a huge run for Team Ice. Team Ice playing about to route their opponent. Team Fire. Fire don't have that much left. Team Ice and Manus and Dugal mid finally do it after being behind, losing their third base, and Fire being stuck really ahead. It was a really back and forth game so far, but Team Ice finally pulling ahead. We'll be unsurmountedly ahead. That's a new question that we're gonna have to figure out soon enough. There's no more absolvers to really help deal deal with that zone control. That's really what helped Team Fire survive those first few fights, having those zone control units the absolvers. And now with the Dread Sisters here as well, they can cast their spells and weaken their units. Oh man. Blood play is running strong, and there's going to be Ketos appearing very soon out of the bodies of those dead Zephyrs. Yeah, look at all those Ketos, cute little guys. Oh yeah, they're also rooted in place, so rooted units. It's enough. Team Fire is going to tap out of this one, but this was a close game. This uh, a close game from these guys. Can't wait for game two. I think we've gone on our way. Fire, we're pretty close to taking it, honestly. If we'd play. Okay. Hello everybody, I'm ZK, and this is the Mortal Gates of Pyrocast. On the top, for Team Ice, we're gonna have Admiral de Gaulle in the blue, and Malice as a Jari in the green. At the bottom, we're gonna have Offman in orange as a Jari, and Fatal Exit as Zol in the red. So Team Fire versus Team versus Team Ice. Both of them have one Croft and one one Aru, and so far. It seems like Team Ice is going for a fast expand. Maybe fast expand on the other side. Uh, Fatal Exit not going for the fast, quite as fast an expand. Okay, I might have just missed the timing. Wait, no. Yeah, okay, I might have just missed the timing slightly. Okay, no, he's going for, that makes sense. He went for a slightly faster alter. So getting the units out and trying to get that first power camp. Something you often want to do as the Immortal Zol. As when you're playing Zol, it's all about getting the Immortal level up. And you only get it, get it up by killing units. So getting those parry camps as soon as possible is a good way to level her up. On the other side, Malice had a Jari, doesn't have to. Getting power is always good, right? To gain that third resource as fast as possible is, is essential for winning those fights later on. And oh man, often going for a triple ex double expand from the get-go. And yeah, this time he he is going to uh, to transform the tower core. It's like these ones. You can transform them into these uh, these complete towers. And what's great about these towers is that they're also going to heal your units whenever they're in this blue circle. It's not any blue circle that does heal, it's only the one here uh, that's around the tower. Generally this gives some other advantages, some units, say if you're playing, um, okay there's no Orzum. Uh, if you're playing Orzum for example, so units will get range. If you're playing the Zephyrs and they wind step in, they'll get extra shields. So you gain some advantage from it. Uh, so yeah, pretty useful to have to have in general. And as a Jari, it will any blue field will heal your units. So you see those units are being healed just by walking in that zone. And Dugal just checking out his opponent to see what's going on here. He's about to be surprised as Fatal Exit heading for the first power camp. Really wants to get that power camp as soon as possible. But Offman really going for that crazy early start here, getting double expanding. Something to note, especially in this game with each expanding expansion costing 500 alloy, it's a lot of money. It's not easy to expand. Or at least it's very expensive. So you gotta be careful about expanding so quickly, so fast. It takes a long time as well for the economy to get up. It's, uh... Ooh, Heaven's Aegis already going on the unit to make sure it survives. Uh, it can get a few shots off and gets 500 extra shields. If it gets focus fired out, it won't do a thing. Gotta be careful though now. Uh, good thing on getting a tower, but you don't want to lose if you're free. All three of them. You're gonna lose one, that's for sure. Once the party for the power cap might be worth it. But yeah, he's running fast enough. Was running away fast enough now, but getting back. Sephora gives a little bit of speed boost, dangerous. Try to get back into here. Yeah, you see the, the unit's gonna start healing as soon as he's in there. That's something you want to do. Get your units and back into the hollow ground, heal up, and before you're ready to jump into the next hit. But yeah, getting both of our camps to begin with, always a good start. Good job on Fatal Exit getting both of them. Even if this this event gets taken out, he still stops his opponent from getting it early, which is also very good. Would we'll be careful here about jumping in, there's just too many units. Uh, time to regroup, take your third base, play super, super economically greedy. Like at this point, if Mal, if Dugal and Manus realize, they could just go for a, for a big kill, 
kill attack, like get three of these buildings. But instead of attacking up, you can get some really strong units out of the Soul Foundry. Uh, but if you really want to kill your opponent, it's probably better to stick on Legion Hall and just ram, in it, ram them in. Jumping in here. Yeah, getting in that power camp and being forced to attack all the getting Going on the map and getting that power. Getting for the camp. Are you kidding me, Fedor? Except going for a fourth base? That's crazy. You don't. You're not supposed to do that. If he does get away with it, it's going to be crazy, but I. There's no way he should be able to get away with that. That's way too much money. It's a thousand alloy. That's 10 units. Uh, 20 units for him, actually, that he could have built that he won't be able to build because of that. Okay, good. It's going to get taken out. Let's. Like, there's one advantage, like, you might be able to get a few unit kills, but there's no way Manus lets this go up. A fourth base is way too crazy. Dugout's looking to take his third base, but for now... Oh, he's able to save it. Evan Zay just saves the... Yeah, with the heal, it's pretty strong. Yeah, but it might not be enough still. He thought he, thought he had enough units, but it's not quite enough. Icor's coming in here for Dugal. They're taking control of those pyro camps. It's great. They have so much pyro for, to cast their immortal abilities. Uh, currently, it's 1-0 for uh, Dugal and Manus. So I'm going to assume, Santa, that you won your game two, games 2-0. We had a few uh, black screens, but nothing too worrisome so far. Yeah, uh, Dugal really taking map control well. <laughs> These guys just triple expanded. Triple expanded. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Santa. <laughs> Triple expanding here, uh, getting that tower up and running, that's going to be good for the defense. Icarus might be able to just go behind and get a few kills if they wanted. Need to oh, I love this! Love this from Offman. Great counter attack here, completely missed it. Thanks to the offer pointing it out. And yeah, that's a lot of kills for only free Safari. Also forcing the opponents completely back, there's nothing on the map. If he wants, he's able to get into the base and take over the pyro camps again. The other side is trying to survive over here. Oh yeah, the complete surround here, that's perfect, it's a beautiful surround. From from Offman, exactly what you wanted. Okay. Well, I guess Manus gets what he's supposed to. He is supposed to take out this base. There's no way four base is supposed to be able to go out like this. At the same time, I like what what Offman is doing, just going for counter attacks across the map. This one, fortunately, has nothing defending him at home right now. He's trying to help his ally, uh, but this base is in dire straits. That tower is not enough to survive. It has a lot of HP, so it gives him time to head back and try to defend, but he's too busy helping his ally right now defend his fourth base, but he only is free. But that's besides the point. He needs to try and keep his third base alive. Zephyr's coming in, but too little too late to save the tower, but might be enough to save this save the base entirely. Absolver's coming in a bit. We need to siege up. We need to siege up quickly if we want to survive this. They're not sieging up at all. Uh, he's too busy taking micro in the other fight, and now he's here. Time to siege up. Once he sieges him up, this base is safe. As soon as they're sieged up, this base is going to be safe, but for now... Instead, a rain of blood comes down for Doug Gao. The ultimate ability, ra blood rains from above as they try to survive. Absolvers are still not sieged up. That's a big mistake. Also coming in with Azul. Fado is trying to survive with Azul. And it might just be enough. There's not enough units. There was only Doug Gao coming in for this attack. And his ally coming in in time. Fado exit helping his ally survive this push. Manus is all alone. Manus has the time to attack the other base while the enemy is completely surrounded by this one. But Manus is not going for the, he's not going for the third base. He's going for the harder base. The base is harder to defend, but the enemies are, his enemies are out of position right now. He might be able to get it, or his man is going to try to destroy. He's going for the production village, going for the sure kill, instead of trying to kill everything. Instead of going for the more valuable target. No, he's attacking both at the same time. He's going to get at least a production structure, and then he needs to run. The enemy is here. He doesn't have enough to survive this. The other side, Offman kept pushing. The Absolvers are powerful. The Absolvers are powerful. It's hard to break them. But one of the best units to break them is actually the Zakal. The Zakal does extra damage to them. And they have a decent amount of HP that can just jump on top and kill him. Focus Fire 1, Focus Fire 2, Good Heavens Aegis. But too little, just a little, not enough there to sort of save them. He needed a few more units than that. And with that, actually the supply is still pretty equal. Getting those early bases really helped the economy. While the guy was just now saturating his, his third base. And of course, during all of that, Offman was heading around the map and creating, adding, and just creating chaos wherever he could. Uh, Man is trying to survive here. That's so many calls, so many calls. Fatal is yet finally got his ult to level two. He's gonna be able to deny this base most likely. Man doesn't have that many units here. You can try and jump the unit, especially if you don't have too much to run right now. The Red Harvest comes down using 
Yeah, that's Red Harvest. They're really using all the spells there to try and just take care of that. That might have been the Gal's Red Harvest there to try and help out his ally. Oh, nice! Protection Circle coming in from, uh, from the Arc Mothers. Arc Mo the units are going to be so tough to kill right now with those abilities in. And Fatal Exit realizes this. He doesn't have to stay. Like, he had no reason to stay after this. It's crazy how much that guy helps me in just putting signals on the map on where I should be looking. I love him for that. Every single time I'm looking somewhere else, he puts the signals like, you should be looking here. I'm like, oh yeah, I should be. Oh, he's just coming down. He's coming in for the surround, but it's not that many units. They're trying to come in, but units from Offman is also coming in. It's about the same amount of units. Wardens can do damage from Offman. There's not that much anti-air, honestly, from the other side. So it could be enough to kill them off, but... I'm trying to jump in here. Jump in as... That's a lot of Wardens. That's a great play for Madness. Playing off like last game. Last game, that's how he won the game, right? He just came in with those frums. This time he's coming in with... Coming in with the Warden to try and do as much damage as he can. Jumping on top of units. It might not be enough. I mean, if there's a lot of army for orange right, for a team fire right now, saying their opponent is always a dangerous proposition, but it seems that they have the numbers game here. They really definitely have the numbers game. The absorbers in the back dealing damage. Everything. Hornets might just be enough to keep it alive. Uh, but here finally come the Zephyrs. Often is doing it. They're keeping the enemies, they're routing their enemies and taking them down. It's going to be enough. He's pushing forward. You just die everywhere. Okay, there's enough wardens they can take care of the few amount of Zephyrs, but no, the Zephyr reinforcements are coming in. The base goes down from the Dodger, but back on two bases. Back on two bases, and yeah, that's a good that's a good play for Madness. Attacking where the enemy is not, trying to do his best. And at the back, Castigator's coming out. Okay, the Castigator's the true anti hero heroes here. Since they're in the ward, is gonna have much more trouble doing damage. It seems like Team Ice is in a lot of trouble trying to survive this next push. As the Zephyrs come in, trying to defend it, and the base burns, explodes. The Karopolis explodes with the Fire of Angels. Trying to push in the choke is always gonna be a bit harder. It might just be enough. The guy is spanning behind us. I love the double expansion from before. Of course, they, they got taken out. And they tried to survive from it. Trying to find another entrance to the base. That's a smart move. But they're getting chased down, so they can just attack here. Counterattack and try to do their damage. I still really love the, the Wardens. The Wardens are a great move. And especially with the base at the top. Trying to attack into another choke point. There's two choke points to attack into. And the guy is doing an admirable job. Uh, hitting from the back. Oh, those, uh, those guys are a bit stuck here. Oh wow, that's actually a perfect surround. The units were in a bad position. They're still going to be surrounded. But it, yeah, the team fire just has two minutes coming from the back. Actually a decent amount of, of units for team, uh, team fire right now. There's nothing really taking care of the wardens. And Manus just keeps making more and more wardens. He doesn't stop building those powerful units. Exactly. Admiral does an admirable job about killing all the units here. All the funds. Yes, yeah, so the other side, Manus is manning up here, getting his units in, trying to kill as many units as he can. And uh, Fatal Exit trying to put a fatal wound on his opponents. Seems to be done with puns soon, or at least a uh, joke puns. Offman. Yeah, actually, it's really hard to put a pun with Offman with uh, T-Baba, the o o Otipaba. And here comes the units coming in, and once you get into the projection cycle, it's harder. Dugout's trying to go for the base trade, but it's harder to win the base trade when your opponents are already there. Eric's coming in for Fatal Exit. He wants nothing to do with the Wardens anymore. Just building a suicide unit that can just kick everything. Man, it's had a valiant effort, but it might not be enough this time around. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot. No, there's one more base for Mattis. Once all the bases are done, it's not an GG for the player.
And the base goes down. Yeah, once all your production is down, that means you can't build anymore because the production are also supply. Or food, I forget what the term is. Oh wow, that's cute, man. Just trying to block him out from the exit. From the other side, yeah, there's not much going on here. Are you going to be able to defend this? Probably. The reinforcements are coming in fast enough that should be able to defend it. Mala coming in here with a red harvest. Should we have enough now? Brave Bolt coming in, with Brave Bolt dying immediately. Yeah, okay, they know about this base, but... Honestly, there's not much else they can do at this point, there's just, uh... Doggao has been known for his fancy GG timings. He does not believe in GGing before everything is over. Of course, we know. We know the truth. There's two bases left, but soon to be none at all. Ooh, but he does get an opponent's base. And like Fatal Exit is stuck on only two bases. He has 143 supply, but they're all on the other side. But he doesn't need to come back at this point. There's just not enough unit for, for Doug Gal, and all the bases are being taken by Offman to make sure he survives this. Zol comes in, doesn't have enough HP, gets two shot, and final base taken out, and that's gonna be it. That's gonna be GG. God damn it. It would have been GG if Doug Gal had not rebuilt right, Dale. Exactly, the Gal of the man actually just rebuilding as much as he can to kill as many bases. Like, and to be fair, he's not wrong, right? If he can get all the bases here, and if there was no other bases, he might be fine. But there is this base, there is the two bases on the bottom left. Doug Gal might actually make it if, if he didn't know what his opponent had. First for him, uh, there's quite a bit left. Man has made a small final army. Gonna try and take out as many units as he can. They do not know what the opponents have. Taking out this base. Now the thing is, he also rebuilt on the other side. He's finally taking out the army. So if he takes out the army, that might actually be game for her. For Hoffman. Finally. Okay, they realize where it is. That's good. I mean, there's two units here. Okay, he has no more. He has no more income and. Yeah, okay, the Earth of World is not producing income anymore, so that's good. We're past that point. But the Gal's still winning the fights here. Like, there's nothing to say as long as he's winning the fights. There's, uh... Wait, no, the Gal might actually win this. Like, no... Well, okay, Offman is still mining over there, but this is the bigger army. Like, you need... Fatal Eggs and Offman have to... have to make their army into one. Because right now, the Gal is getting everywhere. There's no more bases being... Okay, there's still a base here. As long as he didn't build this base, Fatal Exit is still in the game. Building the final resource from his opponent, that's great. Like, there's there's a way that the Gal can make it. Uh, yeah, he found he, he got the Sentinels to finally see it. The Gal has two... Okay, three bases to kill. There's a lot of distance to cover. If they can just kill that one, Fatal Exit and Offman can just kill that one. That's a great... They can win it. Okay, he finally... Safari finally saw it. Probably saw it, but uh, workers are not that weak here. They can deal their dish damage. Okay, the gal is coming back. Okay, killing any units from his opponent is great. There's just not that many units. This is crazy. They're coming back into it. They're... I thought it was completely over, but the gal with the just attacking his opponent is showing what fancy GG timing. It's a reason for that. You win games from fancy GG timings. You come back from games where you thought all was lost. Often is mining off of half a base right now. He only has... They have 60 supply together. That means they have to coordinate their attack. This is a powerful army, especially with the Dread Sister in the back. Part of this army here is it's Sentinels. Sentinels do not attack. The Warden here is powerful. There's... No, oh no. He's losing a unit for nothing. Unit for nothing. No. The base at the back is everything here. He's trying to send back units. Staying in the Warden here is a smart move. Just to deal with any type of unit that could come coming forward. Okay, Doug Gao is ready to separate his army. He has no reason to attack the Grove Guardian. Attacking this base though, yes, that's a great move. The Gao might actually make it. Okay, gets another kill there, gets all the units. 
Fade away because it has almost nothing unless he has the base at the back. Where are the units? Where are all the army units? Is it the, all, the, all that's left is the air units? The Dread Sister attacking the Warden war should... Okay, there's a few uh, mass hunters there. He roots it down. The mass hunters are doing some damage, but is it enough damage? Offman trying to do his best. He needs to run away. He can heal up, but doesn't have any tar he doesn't have any hard towers left. Okay, he has the Heaven's Ages here. That's great. But is it enough? He wants to kill the Dread Sister. Dread Sister is super powerful. Uh, Zephyr is coming in. He killed the Dread Sister, one of the most powerful units his opponents had. The Gallo still has some economy running here. He still has 1400 alloy. He's still mining a bit. He's still able to do something. Uh, but he's being routed. He separated his army in two, which is, you know, how the other team could end up making it. Pulling the work is also a great move here, coming in from all angles. Okay, the whole army is here. He's building. He's going to build a blood, a blood well to try and heal up his units. Okay, he's using Mala's ability to embiggen all his units. You want to embiggen units as much as possible. And at this point, this base is done. There's two bases left. I'm not sure they are aware of it. I'm not sure if it's... Yeah, you can see the hallowed ground, but probably not on the minimap directly. Okay, this fight is perfect for the gal. The gal has such a bigger army than his opponent here. Play to exit is all alone. His opponent has four sentinels. He brings out Zol. Zol is great at these fights, but is it enough? His and Jages comes down to use. Man is doing all he can to keep his ally in check, help him out with the Heaven's Agent. But this might be the final, final fight of the game as they're coming in. There's not much anti-air left though. That. The warden all alone could be winning this game. Of course, Emerald Dugal does have some income. He can build. He can build cement here now, and he needs to build cement here. And yeah, okay, incubator instead. He's coming in, trying to get to the final base of it all. He's coming in for the final base, attacking in and jumping in. He believes this is the final base, so I think if he can beat this, he's gonna win the game. Oh, on the other side, Fado Exit coming in. I don't know. I don't know if he remembers the Brood Anchors here. Brood Anchors are really powerful for defending any type of location, especially against units like this. He's running away. Oh, second Warden is coming out, and more Zephyr. So Wardens are the unit of choice for Offman. If he's able to get them, get enough out, he might be able to defend his base on the left. I still don't know who's going to win this. He gets the final base. The girl thought that was it, but no, there's still more units coming in. There's two more Zephyrs. They're getting them on the rally out. The girl needs to reinforce with whatever anti-air. Okay, Underspine is pretty decent. Incubator's not quite it for anti-air. Oh, there we go. He's going for the last base. Fado Exit. These are the last two bases. If he's able to get them with... God. Just take two hours to only run on your own routeway. This is your opponent's routeway, so it won't work. Bam. This base is going to go down. But... There's two bases left. Doug Gal is going to the final base. Doug Gal is going to do it. Doug Gal is getting to the final base. He he didn't fancy GG for a reason. He's going to take out the game. He's going to be able to win this series 2 to nothing. Thanks to his prowess of taking out the game. This is GG. Ice wins 2-0 here. Wow. What a game. Shenanigans. This was... felt like the game was over. Doug Gal found a way out. And uh, yeah, counter-attack for the win.